Robert Olnick Pavilion will not only give us more galleries, but will also add an educational center and will really give Magazzino even more room to embrace its role as a cultural center. So one thing that is incredibly impactful about your work is that it was always accompanied and a part of the Black Panther Party newspaper that had circulation across thousands and thousands of uh, people's desks over you know, the years of its publication. I'm wondering if you can talk about you know, what the significance and importance is of print to the artworks that you produced and why it is that that particular material was so crucial to the success of your artwork. Well, you know, we always, hearing them always said when they first started the paper, uh, the black the, the black community was not a reading community. They learned through observation and participation at that time. And so I think it, it was able to capture a, a whole perspective aspect of the community that wasn't going to read articles, but would learn through the photographs and the visuals that they seen to get the gist of what was going on. So I'm Sampada Ranke and I, um, I teach art history and comparative studies at Ohio State University. So I'm based out of Columbus. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful to be able to be in conversation with you, the prolific artist and activist Emery Douglas, um, on this occasion to talk about your cover for Art Forum for October Mm -hmm. 2023. So I guess just to kind of start, maybe you could offer up a little bit of background in terms of uh, how you got involved in the party and specifically kind of your role as um, a cultural worker and an artist working during this particular um, era in American history. Yes, well, um, I, I I got involved uh, during the Black Arts Movement, and which was the Black Conscious Movement, uh, and and when we began to define ourselves as as African American, as opposed to Negro, and there was many. Uh, beginning development of the uh, Black arts movements across, Black studies movements across the country on the university campuses. It was during that time, that uh, that period as well, that you had the uh, some young men and sisters who were trying to bring Sister Betty Shabazz to the Bay Area to honor her. They knew of my work in the Black arts movements, and they asked me if I wanted to, if I would do the poster for that event. So I went to the next uh, planning session, and they said, uh, I said, I had agreed. And they said, well, some brothers will be coming over next week, and they will let us know if they're going to do the security for the event or not. And when they came over, that was Huey Newton, Bobby Seal, and little Bobby Hutton, and a little few of the first Panthers. And I knew that's what I wanted to be a part of. So one Saturday, I went by there, they were downstairs. This was when Bobby Seale was trying to complete that first legal size pa- a paper issue. And I seen him, I said, well, I can help you improve that because I still had imp- uh, materials from I had at City College. And I hmm. just lived about 45 minutes away. And I said, I can go home and get them and come back. He said, okay. And when I came back, they said they were finished. He said, well, we're finished with this. He said, but he and Hewitt said, well, you, you've been hanging around. And he said, we're going to start the paper. And we want you to be the artist. You will become the revolutionary artist. And eventually you will become the minister of culture. But we want to have, uh, try to have a lot of photographs in the picture for elders and seniors who and others who weren't going to read the long articles. They could get the gist of the story by looking at the photographs and the artwork that we hope that you would do for the paper. And so mm-hmm. that became the foundation. Yeah, one of the things that, you know, I've I've always kind of gravitated towards in your work is this beautiful kind of ability where you take the photographic image and you kind of combine it with um, graphic elements and illustration. And I think, Mm -hmm. you know, there's a way that your ability to kind of see with such Um, generosity and detail is what makes these beautiful pieces of work that you've created so lasting and so moving for us into today. You know, thinking about the poster that's on the cover of this um, issue of Art Forum, how you sourced those images, like specifically that photograph 
of Bobby Hutton because, you know, it appears across multiple objects in that time, like the Berkeley yeah. Barb cover in 68. Mm-hmm. So I'm just wondering if maybe you could tell us the story of that particular poster from 1971. And, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How it came to be. First, the photograph came about from when the police attacked our office uh, around, uh, I think this was 19, late 1967, so going to 68. The verdict had came in when Huey Newton had been charged with the uh, murder of the Oakland police and uh, that he was exonerated from that. And uh, we felt that the police would come by and do something crazy. So we left the office early that day. Sure enough, they came by and they shot up the office. And that was one of the posters that was in the office. You know, little Bobby Hutton was the very first member of the Black Panther Party. Huey Newton and Bobby Seale mentored him. And they had to get permission from his parents for him to join. Because I think he, when they started, he was 15, six, going on 16 at that time. So that picture is, resonates when little, on April 6th, when we were planning commemoration programs in Oakland for uh, two days before Dr. King had been assassinated in Memphis, Tennessee. And so we were planning programs and stuff to uh, to honor his his legacy and who he was. And there happened, the police came down on them where they were traveling from one point to the other. And little Bobby Hutton uh, was with Eldridge Cleaver. And, and I think they ran into a house in Oakland because I was not there, I'm telling you secondhand, because I was still working on the newspaper. Mm-hmm. And so um, when they went into the house uh, and they shot up the house, firebombed it the whole bit. And what happened, they told, the elders told little Bobby to come out with his, take his clothes off and come out when they came out. And uh, little Bobby kind of was, you know, being young, didn't want to really do it, but he, I think he did do it. But when they got to the, to the, uh, out on the street to where they, from what I understand, where they, where they were putting them into the paddy wagon, uh, they pushed him in each trip, and they shot him over 19, about 19 times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's the official picture. But we, in the context of the photograph of how I used it, was in call, because we began to call for community can patrol the police thereafter. Uh, that was the begin, the initial call that you had on a broad national scale was when we began to talk about it, in particular with people of color and what have you. Around that picture, and we're still educated around that picture. Every year mm-hmm. we have, we do uh, around, we do forums around Little Bobby Hutton. And uh, you have, because it was young people who were inspired by Little Bobby Hutton. Mumia yeah. Abu Jamal, we met him, I met him when he was 15 years old. And he was the deputy minister of information then. Mm-hmm. And we went in, he was showing around, smiling. He had to picture Little Bobby Hutton up, up on his, on, behind him. So Little Bobby Hutton was a symbol for a lot of the young people who came into the organization during that time as well. One big moment in the late 60s, early 70s is your work gets curated by Suzanne Jackson, right? In her, in a gallery in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And it enters this kind of like um, more quote unquote formal art world space. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I think she was a supporter of the Black Mm Panther Party. Mm-hmm. And so it was in that context. Yeah. It was still images that were in the paper and all those things, but they were also put on the walls as posters and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And so uh, in that context, then that was still educating, informing mm-hmm. and enlightening by people mm-hmm. who came to see them in the gallery mm-hmm. itself. So it wasn't like we had begun to compromise what we stood for because mm-hmm. the art was a reflection of that. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't changed nor worn down just to be in the gallery. So it, it plus it opened it up to a broader audience as, as well. As long as it can't be compromised, and that's okay. Yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. The gallery is classroom, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's yeah. another location. It's yeah, yeah so it's, incredible. And, and that's the whole thing. It's about transforming minds and ideals. So mm-hmm. that's what it's <laughs> you know, it's for the, uh, the, the the informed and the uninformed, the unenlightened yeah. and the enlightened. You know, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, thank you so much, Emery. I can't imagine a better kind of way to um, highlight, you know, this work. And I and I'm so grateful that you made the time to to talk to us about it today. So thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Take care. <laughs>